Hi, I'd like to welcome you all here this morning for a timely and important conference. It has a number of roots that go deep, and I want to start by acknowledging a couple of people who really help to inspire the discussions today. The first is Dale Hatfield, who's in Colorado and can't join us. Ever since I joined the faculty at the University of Colorado 10 years ago, Dale has said to me, um, Phil, the, the way the agency operates is not the way it used to operate. And in that, he would often invoke his rabbi, although Dale is not a member of the Jewish tribe, but he <laughs> would, would uh, probably be willing to say Henry Geller is his rabbi, um, and that he had a sense that there were ways in which the commission operated that undermined its ability to do its job. And Dale kept saying this over uh, you know, literally a decade, and he would note different aspects of the way things used to work, having independent analysis in commissions that would be uh, relevant to policymaking, strategic planning, um, adjudications, a lack of reliance on the ex parte process, um, and so on. And he said, Phil, you really need to write a paper about this. Well, over the ensuing 10 years, this was somewhere on my to-do list, and finally this past summer, as it was rising higher, I get a call from Gigi, and Gigi says, Phil, the Ford Foundation has a real interest in this. Jenny Toomey, who's the program officer there, is very entrepreneurial and sees that this is an issue that needs to be on the agenda of the next administration, and we want to find an academic who could really dig into this. Would you be willing to help us? And this sort of was, um, I guess, just the nudge I needed. For those who don't know Gigi, she's a wonderful nudger in the best sense of that word, um, <laughs> and very effective at what she does. And so I figured I would take this on, and for those who want to See the long version of this online. There's probably a 35-page single-space paper with lots of footnotes that tries to set out and do justice to a lot of material that we really need to try to bring together. And today, we're going to try to bring it to life. Um, but I have to acknowledge Henry Geller, um, who, in a sort of underscoring that nothing is new under the sun, uh, almost you know, uh, 25 years ago had a, fe a federal, a modest proposal to reform the Federal Communications Commission. And in that, he cites then, uh, you know, a 1960 uh, report which said, the commission has drifted, vacillated, and stalled in almost every major area. It seems incapable of policy planning, of disposing within a reasonable period of time the business before it. Now, this sounds like it could be written today, um, and obviously there are criticisms that do still resonate from the past. And that gives us an interesting two-part agenda today to mine the lessons from the past as well as see the opportunities for reform. What we've chosen to do is start off with the latter proposition. Where are the opportunities for reform? How can the commission conduct its business in a more effective manner? And we believe, and this is our central premise, which after having written 35 pages, I am wholly convinced of and hopefully will convince you of it. The question isn't whether the FCC needs to be reformed, it's how it needs to be reformed. And that's gonna be our central project today. And so we appreciate all of you coming here. Um, I have to also underscore in a some commercial announcement that the center that I'm the head of, the Silicon Flatiron Center, has a project on this very topic. We're calling this New Models of Governance, and part of the premise is we need a new paradigm. The old models of the FCC haven't necessarily been fully effective, and in the Internet age, we have new challenges, and this uh, project, we have two of our uh, real drivers right here, Jonathan Sallet and Pierre DeVries, is going to explore these sorts of issues. And so this is really, in one sense, the first of several different discussions on that broad theme. And if that theme interests you at all, please see Jonathan, Pierre, or myself. Um, so on behalf of Silicon Flatirons, I'm so glad to be here and working with Gigi on this important topic. <laughs> 